If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. Here with my baby Evangeline, she's gonna walk me around everywhere. Yeah? Uh, you can go over to them if you'd like. Uh, I had an idea for a video I wanted to do while I'm with her because obviously it's going to be really important to me that I teach her how to play magic at some point. And so this video is going to be about what, you know, some tips that you can use to teach people how to play magic if they don't really have any experience with trading card games at all especially. If you're teaching kids, if you're teaching people that are just new to the genre, um, here's some quick things that you might be able to do. Uh, number one, obviously build a deck for them. Don't make them go out and build their own deck. That doesn't go quite as well. Yeah. Make sure that when you build them a deck, it's simple for them to play. Uh, so something like a deck with all creatures and lands, just to get them started. Or I have a Murgonda Petroclips deck. Oh, there we are. And that's a pretty simple one to learn as well because all of the creatures are vanilla and everything else is just simple math. Um, so beyond that, uh, the next thing that you can do is make sure, try to start them out with just one color and then move them up to two colors as it goes on. Don't let them have to experience a color screw any earlier than they have to. Yeah, there we go. All right. So if you give someone a deck that's, say, two or three colors, that increases the likelihood that they're going to have, say, their first or second game be one where they don't get the colors they need. And you don't want to give them that experience too early. The next tip that I have is try to play just yeah. basics at first. Don't make them have to learn the new lands. I say new lands. Don't make them learn more complicated lands until they start to get the hang of the basics. Yeah. Uh, next, try... There are a lot of fairly simple decks that you can get people on to start. White Weenie, Green Stompy, Burn. Try one of those first. Hey, you want to say hi to them first? You want to say hi? Say hello. Say hello to the wonderful people. No, if not, let's keep walking. Let's keep walking, right? Yeah. yeah while we're here, while we're at the park. Mm -hmm. And you're fast. Um, another thing is, as cool as Planeswalkers are, and they are definitely cool, try to introduce Planeswalkers later, just because of how complicated they are. Um, another quick thing, try to introduce them to Standard first, if you can. And, or Standard or Popper. And the reason for that is because you want to get them into a cheap format first, that way if they get hooked, they're not going to think, oh wait, I can't play unless I spend a billion dollars, unless I spend two thousand dollars to be competitive. So get them into standard or popular first, so that the price doesn't end up knocking them out of the game right off. You had doing a little dance for us, a little jig. Mm-hmm. You're so special. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. And it also, I think, helps if you teach them one-on-one -on -one the basics yeah. of it, but then pretty shortly thereafter try to get them in a group of other people, especially those that aren't terribly skilled either. That way they don't feel... So one issue with playing competitive chess, for instance, is that when you're just starting out, everyone is better than you, everyone knows more than you, and that initial learning curve is super hard to overcome for a lot of people. So letting them play against other players that are about their skill level uh, gives them that chance to not immediately be taken aback and blown away. Instead, it gives them a chance to sort of learn and build up while they're occasionally still winning. All right. Well, that's it for now. Definitely teach your kids if you can. Definitely teach your kids because it's a good game for learning, right? It's a good game for development. It got a Mensa Select Award, Magic the Gathering did. A lot of these tips can apply to other games as well, absolutely. Um, not everything applies to just magic. 
with something like, say, Yu-Gi-Oh! if you want to get them started, don't put them into these ridiculous archetype combo decks where you need to know the inner workings of the game before you can even be competent with it. You know, get them started with some old school Blue Eyes deck or something. That way, it, the interactions are pretty easy, and you're, they're playing a deck that's powerful and it makes them feel good when it goes off because they're doing something explosive. It's the Timmy inside of them. Alright. You want to say bye-bye? Say bye-bye! Say bye-bye, Evangeline! Not that kind of bye-bye. Okay. I love you. I love you very much. We'll see you later. Can you give me a kiss? <laughs> ah! Okay. Mwah! <laughs> she yeah. knows. Kissy monster is coming. Kissy monster. <laughs> okay. See ya. Bye-bye.